Hello and welcome to the second in a series of brief video training tutorials for the Shipping Container Home Design software. Now in this particular training video what we're going to do is we're going to run through the user interface of the software and explain the various tool functionality that's built into the tool itself. Now interestingly one of the most challenging things for new users to come to grips with with the software is not the actual tools themselves but the concept of navigation and what we mean by navigation is how do we move in and around our three-dimensional world if you've ever played a, a 3d computer game where you walk around you probably notice the first time you play the game it's a little awkward you move around and you're pressing various buttons and you're trying to work out how you move around and after a few minutes of practice you kind of get the gist get the hang of how the controls work and really the software is similar to that so navigation is perhaps the most challenging a tutorial and we're going to deal with that in training video number three this is training video number two we're simply going to run through the tools themselves and what function they hold when the software starts you'll see you by default uh, in what we call view mode and we can tell this because the view tool tool icon here at the top left hand corner of our screen is blue and if we move our mouse across the various other tool functions you can see a little dialog box pops up and and tells us what the tool does so we're in view mode by default that's one of the ways that we can navigate in and around our 3d world over here a couple of tools um, to the right is called the walk tool and that's the second way that we can navigate a lot of people find walking around the best way to explore their finished models it's very similar to a 3d computer game you can press on the forward arrow could you move forwards and left and right and backwards um, again we're going to deal with navigation a little further on so let's simply move on to the tool functions themselves here's the color tool we activate the tool by clicking on it and you can see where the view tool was um, highlighted in color before when we click on the color tool with our left hand mouse button the color tool is um, is lit up with colors and that means that the tool function for color is activated and this is true as we click on the move tool you can see it goes to move mode to rotate mode and to walk mode so let's go back to color tool we click on it to activate now you need to have a plug-in style computer mouse to get this software to run correctly although in theory you can run the software using the mouse pad that's built into most laptop computers what you'll find is trying to get a very fine level of control using that mouse mat is almost impossible and it will drive you crazy so if you're wanting to use the software you need to make sure and I need to make I need to emphasize this you must make sure that you've got a plug-in style computer mouse so we plug in our mouse we click on our color tool and what the color tool does is it allows us to add a tint or a color to any object or material that we introduce into our scene so we've got the color tool activated and what we do is select an object in the scene by clicking on it now I'm going to click once with my um, left hand mouse button on the white shipping container here and that activates that object as being live so now the white container is live because we've clicked on it we've selected it and you can see when you click on it and we hold the mouse button down this time a pinwheel or rainbow wheel of colors appears on our screen and what this allows us to do if we practice by moving our mouse around this color wheel this adds that color as a tint to that object so the 40 foot shipping container over here has been colored blue and the 10 foot red one has been colored white but effectively these are three white objects that have had colors placed on them okay so the left hand mouse button activates the color wheel whilst we're in color mode if we use the right hand mouse button we can activate an opacity or transparency and we can move from solid in the top left hand corner to transparent at the bottom right hand corner this is particularly useful when you're dealing with things like glass where we can create a, a square or rectangular shape using the shapes tool and add some blue color to it and then use that transparency to make it somewhat transparent which gives the visual indication or visual representation of it being made out of glass so that's our color tool that's our transparency tool right next to the um, color tool is the move tool 
And the move tool allows us to move our objects left and right and up and down in our scene. So if we click on the move tool and then click and hold the left hand mouse button down on any object, we can actually move these objects around. And you can see by using the left hand mouse button, I can move the object left and right and backwards and forwards in my scene. If you want to move an object up into the air, simply hold down the right hand mouse button. And you can see this allows us to raise and lower the object. And you can even see on the screen, it's telling us how far from the ground we've raised that object. Now, if you've got your um, unit set to feet and inches, that'll show in feet and inches. I've got mine set at millimeters, so it's showing me that in metric units. So that's the move tool. Right next door to the move tool is the rotate tool. Click on the rotate tool to activate it and use the left hand mouse button and we can rotate an object into a scene which is particularly useful when you don't want to apply objects at 90 degree intersections to each other or parallel to each other but you want to have a degree and you can see it actually shows you not only the distance you've moved um, in terms of uh, millimeters but also the angle of rotation of that object to its original position so that's the move tool we're going to talk about the shapes tool, uh, the walk tool in a moment, so let's bypass that for the time being. These two buttons here are particularly useful. If you make a mistake at any time in the construction process, just click on the undo tool. And every time you click on the undo tool, the software will step back one step in the process. That's pretty much the, um, the navigation tools, the move tool, the rotate tool, and the color tool. One last tool I'm going to talk about, and I'm just going to place myself up in the air here, is the objects browser Now, what the objects browser does is allows us to insert objects from our built-in library of three-dimensional objects into our three-dimensional world and how we do that we activate the objects browser by clicking on it with the left hand mouse button and you'll see a dialog box will appear in the middle of the screen that provides a drop down that then we can access the various object library categories now this is the free version of the software that I'm demonstrating here so you can see there's a fairly limited number of objects available we do provide a comprehensive three-dimensional object library upgrade for people that are interested in landscaping elements and for interior design we do provide a small number of these objects um, in addition to the container home modules themselves in the free version so that you can familiarize yourself with the overall concept of adding objects um, into the scene and moving and rotating them into position. So how do we place an object into the scene? We click on the ground where, the ob where we want the object to be placed. We click on the objects browser button. This displays the dialog box. We go to the objects library category that require, in this case, I want to place a shipping container home module in my scene. And we simply click on the unit that we wish to uh, be inserted into our scene and you can see it's inserted. So we've inserted an object. We know now how to use the move tool with the left hand mouse button down. We can move the object around with the rotate tool and the left hand mouse button held down. We can rotate the object. Okay. So in a nutshell, that's the basic functionality and overview of the tools themselves. What we're going to do now is uh, break here and come back with training tutorial number three, which talks about, as I said, perhaps the most challenging uh, function of the software itself, inserting an object, I'm sure you'll agree, is quite simple. Moving an object, equally simple. Rotating object, again, a simple process. The most challenging part of the software for most new users is the simple art of navigating or moving around our 3D seed. It's not that hard to do. It just takes a little bit of an explanation of how the navigation works and a little bit of practice on your behalf. So I hope you've enjoyed training tutorial number two, and we'll be back with training tutorial number three, navigating around our virtual world. Thank you for your time.